Welcome everybody to today's episode of the Lindsay Elmore Show. Today's show is all about how can we become better stewards of our environment. All day, every day, we are constantly consuming and getting rid of excess and throwing things away. And yet, we don't necessarily take a moment to take a step back and say, how does this impact the greater world around me? Today, I'm going to be speaking with Katherine Kellogg. She is a going zero waste advocate, and we talk about simple ways that you can start in your own home to reduce your environmental footprint. Because the more that we reduce our environmental footprint, the more that our environment is able to provide for us clean air, clean water, and clean food that helps to keep us all healthy. After that, I'm going to tell you a bit about why I compost and how I started my first compost pile, some compost piles that I have seen around my newest compost pile, which is the first ever compost tumbler that I've ever had, and why I recommend going and buying worms. Let's get to the show. Welcome to The Lindsay Elmore Show, a podcast that helps you find fulfillment amidst chaos. On this show, I interview thought leaders, doctors, creatives, spiritual gurus, and game changers who inspire you to pursue your dreams, overcome obstacles, and leave your mark. Katherine Kellogg is the founder of Going Zero Waste, a lifestyle website dedicated to helping others live a healthier and more sustainable life. She's a spokesperson for Plastic Free Living for National Geographic. She is the Chief Sustainability Officer at One Movement and the author of 101 Ways to Go Zero Waste, which breaks eco-friendly, sustainable living down into easy-to-follow, step-by-step processes, complete with lots of positivity and love. Catherine Kellogg, welcome to the Lindsay Elmore Show. Thank you so much for having me. So when I was in fourth grade, I picked up a copy of a book about recycling because I wanted to do something to help. And I was so proud of myself because at my after school program, I started a club where I could raise awareness about the importance of recycling. And then when I read the book, it was like, start a club in your area. And I was like, I am so ahead of my time right now. So ahead of my time. So you teach people how to go zero waste, which is an extraordinarily difficult thing to do if you've never conceptualized, like, where do I even begin this whole process? When did your love and passion for the environment and living in this minimalist way, where did it begin? So there's, There's so much you said I want to unpack. I mean, first of all, you're way ahead of me in the fourth grade, way ahead of me. So I'm from Arkansas, which is not the most progressive state in America. I think we can all agree on that. And I was not raised by a family that, respect isn't the right word, but a family that didn't go out of their way to take care of the environment. We didn't recycle Mm -hmm. growing up. We just, we just weren't living a super eco-friendly life. So for me, I actually started making a lot of zero waste changes out of financial necessity. I was a full-time professional working actor. I was living in actor housing. I wasn't making a bunch of money. And so I started using reusable products rather than disposable ones because it saves you a lot of money. And then I also started making a lot of these changes for health reasons and using Eco-friendly cleaners not only saves you money, it's also better for your health. You know what you're spraying in the environment, trying to reduce my plastic usage. I was having a lot of health problems. My hormones are really imbalanced. And then when I moved out to California, it all clicked for me that everything I was doing for my personal health 
wasn't only better for me, but also better for the health of the planet. And mm. then I just got really excited and I started writing about it, saving money, better for your health. And then a lot of people just really took notice. And when we talk about living a zero waste lifestyle, for me, it's not about fitting all your trash in a mason jar. I think that's kind of an unrealistic expectation. And instead, it's just about living a more eco-friendly lifestyle. It, when I talk about it now, I, I simply say, you know, I run a website that's dedicated to helping people reduce their trash or live a more sustainable life because I love the word sustainable. There's so much that's encompassed in that word. It's not just about the planet. It's also about you because we have non-renewable resources as well. The planet does, so do we. Time, right? Mm -hmm. Time is a non-renewable resource. We are never getting back. So I want to make sure that what I'm doing is that I'm approaching this from a really holistic point of view that also puts people and the planet in a way that we can make sustainable changes that are better for everyone. I love what you said, and it reminds me, just this morning, I was doing a class about functional medicine, and this morning, we were talk about, talking about stress and talking about the hypothalamus and the pituitary and the adrenals and the thyroid and the gut and the immune system, and the presenter said, you need to think about stress as a bank account. As you said, getting all of your trash into a mason jar is not realistic. But if you can look at, well, here's my overall output of what I am throwing away that I cannot reuse, that I cannot recycle and cannot be made into something else or given away. And then here is what I am consuming. If you can minimize those deficits, then you are making an impact. And so talk to us about some of the changes that you made, because, you know, you said that you were facing these health problems and hormones were imbalanced. What were some of the first changes that you began to make and which ones do you still do? And which ones are you like, oh, never again? That's so, that's so funny because the, there, the things that are still my favorite are the things I started with. And that, that's what I, I really like. So up first, cleaning products. It is so easy to make your own cleaning products. And as I've gotten older, I've definitely, I've started DIYing less. The idea of making deodorant does not appeal to me anymore. But the idea of making a cleaning product still does because it will literally truly take you 30 seconds. That is not hyperbole, 30 seconds. And then you can clean your whole home and it costs two cents, right? It's amazing. I, I love making my own cleaning products. That was the first place I started. Uh, the second place I started is I really started reducing a lot of animal products in my diet. As we all know, animal agriculture has a huge footprint on the planet. And I know for a lot of reasons, I, I don't tell people to go vegan. I just don't, there's so many ex external factors that dictate someone's diet that it's just not my MO, but I do think we can reduce a lot of the animal products we consume. On average, according to, uh, in 2018, they, they basically took how much meat Americans consume and just divided it by every American. And it came out to 0.6 pounds of meat a day. That doesn't oh. include- Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> a lot. And that doesn't include eggs and dairy and other animal products. That's just meat. That's a lot of meat. And the only thing I think all nutritionists agree on is that Americans could should probably eat more vegetables. We just don't eat a lot of vegetables. On average, Americans diet 4%. 4% of their diet is fresh fruits and vegetables. That's it. Mm. Only 4% of their diet. And that's that's not a lot. And as we know, fruits and vegetables have a lot of really great vitamins and minerals in them. So, and they're also vegetables are, are really inexpensive compared to meat mm -hmm. and like beans, the cost comparison of beans to meat and broccoli to, to beef, right? It, it's just a lot cheaper to get beans and broccoli. So a lot of financial necessity as well. I started eating a more plant-based diet and that, that has been one of the really, really great things for my health trying to eat more fruits and vegetables, of course, you're going to feel a lot better, save a lot of money. And then the third thing that I really tackled was, let's see, cleaning, yeah, cleaning. And then we had uh, diet. Oh, and then beauty products. Beauty products mm. is kind of the, the third tier, which I did make quite a few skincare products when I first started out because I really enjoyed that. 
but I don't really enjoy it anymore. And there's a lot of really good sustainable alternatives on the market. If you're really doing this to save money, making your own, definitely the way to go. But if you're looking to save more time and then just simply opt for greener and cleaner alternatives, then getting them store bought. But I found one of the best ways of just saving money is to reduce down to a capsule of products and not buying things I don't need. Mm, absolutely. When, you know, we have makeup that just sits around for years and years and years. And I remember I have strategically gone through and cleaned a lot of that out. And even looking at the packaging that beauty products come in can be very, very helpful. So going for maybe the drop in size containers versus the full size, etc. 